This is the ASUS ROG Flow Z13. And we've taken a look at it a couple times on the channel, but I've actually got my hands on their highest end model. And with this one here, we can dedicate 96 gigs of VRAM to the iGPU. And I really wanted to see how it would perform. When it comes down to it, the Flow Z13 does contain the world's most powerful iGPU. It's the AMD Radeon 8060S. We've been able to test it with about eight gigs of VRAM. And of course, 96 gigs of VRAM will be overkill for 99.9% .9 of AAA games on the market right now. We're still gonna be testing out some AAA games here by the end of the video, but I also wanted to test out some large language models like Olama. I also wanna test out some image and video generation just to see how it performs with that extra VRAM. And if you were thinking about picking one of these up, even with just 32 gigs of memory, super easy to get more VRAM dedicated, UMA frame buffer size. And on this one, we can go all the way up to 96 gigs, leaving us with about 32 gigs of system memory. But we're going to have this all dedicated to that 8060S with this Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. Moving in a bit closer so we can get a better look at everything. As you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 with the Radeon 8060S. Now that we've dedicated 96 gigs of RAM to the iGPU, we've got 32 left to work with for system memory. And down here, you can see we're sitting at 96 gigs on that 8060S. We've also got the NPU that can be utilized and having this much VRAM is gonna be great for LLMs. So what I've done here is I've actually installed a few things. Not going too crazy here. I've installed LM Studio. And we'll just use this uh, Llama model here. Yeah, we'll just use this. We'll create a new chat and we can actually choose from one of these or you can ask it basically any question. This is running natively on the laptop or the two-in-one. How do I solve a Rubik's Cube? It's gonna go down the list, kind of give us a guide on how to do it. Now, uh, when it comes to a Rubik's Cube, the only way I've ever been able to solve it completely without like one missing, one out of place, was take the whole thing apart. So this could definitely help me out here if I follow these instructions. And I believe this is only, yeah, it's only hitting up the CPU right now. To tell you the truth, I actually haven't seen any settings here to utilize the GPU with this. But I do have something installed here that actually uses the CPU, GPU, and even the NPU. So we'll go ahead and exit out of this. And I've been messing around with the Muse lately with the new RX 9070 XT. And it works here with this Strix Halo APU. So this is pretty awesome. And we're just going to go to easy mode to start with. Now over here, we do have the XDNA2 stable diffusion that we can use. And we can actually bump up the quality. But I'm gonna leave this off and just kind of show you the difference here. We'll do, let's do two images. So first up, we can create basically anything. I'm just gonna do Hello Kitty fighting Godzilla. We'll generate the image. It's gonna load the pipeline for us. And once that pipeline is loaded, it's pretty quick to generate these images. And yeah, these actually don't look too bad. But we can make these look even better by using the AMD XDNA2 Stable Diffusion and Super Resolution, using the NPU to help us out. We're still on two. We'll just generate those images. Again, it's gonna load that pipeline for us. And this one does take a little longer because uh, it's kind of upscaling with the XDNA2 here from AMD. And these aren't exactly what I wanted. So what I'm gonna do here is actually just take the quality all the way up. We're gonna go with four. We're going to use the XDNA super resolution and generate four more of these images. There we go. These look a lot better. And it is utilizing that NPU to kind of use super resolution here. And the new version of Amuse also has a video generator. And this is actually pretty cool. But instead of real video generation, what it is is kind of video to video. So we'll select a model here. I'll go with Dream Shaper Lighting. We're gonna use the AMD XDNA Super Resolution for this. We'll load it up. Now we can input our prompt, but we'll also need a video for this to work. Now with something like this, I'm not gonna do 60 frames because it would take quite a long time. We're also gonna lower the resolution on this. So I'm gonna to go to 960 by let's say 640. I am going to enable frame blending here. And we'll add a prompt, walking in a wasteland with futuristic armor on. 
So it looks like everything's good to go. Down here, we've got our RAM, CPU, GPU, NPU usage, and we can go ahead and generate. It's gonna process the input video. It's gonna load the pipeline for us. And then basically it's gonna go frame by frame and generate a new image and then put it into kind of a video format. So here's the first one. We're just using six steps here. So we could get it looking a lot better by going up, but obviously doing 227 frames here would take a long time if we were to go up to let's say 15 steps. And this is the first one I came up with. And the big issue I always run into when using Stable Diffusion for video like this is kind of the consistent character. So it's definitely something that I need to research with a muse. But now I wanna move over to some gaming on this iGPU. And the first one we're taking a look at here is Cyberpunk 2077. We're gonna use Ray Tracing Ultra set at 1080p. And even though this iGPU does put out some really great performance, it's still AMD and doesn't handle ray tracing quite as well as some others out there. So we will need some FSR3 frame gen, but with that enabled, I mean, we're getting a really great frame rate here. And without it, we can actually get an average of around 52. So we're under 60 there at Ray Tracing Ultra. Frame gen is kind of a must if you wanna get over 60. And with it enabled, we see an average of around 88. And if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see that the TDP on this APU is at 85 watts right now. And we're using close to nine gigs of VRAM. I actually thought it would be a bit more with ray tracing set to ultra. And I think if we took that resolution up, it would use more, probably go up to around 12 gigs at 1440. But we're nowhere close to 96 gigs of VRAM. And really when it comes down to it, I mean, adding that much VRAM over there on the iGPU side really comes in handy for those LLMs. Now I'd say if you were to use something like this with 128 gigabytes of memory, I would probably end up dedicating 16 gigs to the iGPU here just to make sure we've got enough for anything we want to throw at it. But there's no doubt that this iGPU here, the Radeon 8060S, does put down some absolutely amazing performance. And this game is fully playable at 1440 high with FSR set to quality if you're not using ray tracing. Next up, Spider-Man 2, very high settings with ray tracing set to high, 1080p, and ray tracing really does take it out of this. At high 1440, again, just like Cyberpunk, you can get a really playable frame rate here with no ray tracing. And if you look, we're at about 9.2 gigs of VRAM. The next one I wanted to test here was Forza Horizon 5. And with this one, we can go up to 1440p at extreme settings and get over 90 FPS on average. With this, we're at 10 gigs of VRAM, up to 86 watts on that APU. And yeah, I mean, it's trucking along here at 1440. Now this is one I like testing on iGPUs and I know we're really working with the most powerful one on the market. We've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p highest settings and we've got an average of 121 FPS. This is at 100% resolution scale. We're not using CAS or XESS. When it comes to The Witcher 3, I initially went into this at 1440, really hoping that we could run this at ray tracing high. And unfortunately, without some dynamic resolution set, it's just gonna kind of fall on its face at 1440. But at 1080 ray tracing high, we're getting averages in the high 80s. And finally, GTA 5 Enhanced, love it or hate it, we're at 1440, ray tracing high. And I did try ray tracing maximum. We were right there at about 55 FPS with no FSR, and I really wanted to get that true 1440 out of it with ray tracing enabled on this setup. So yeah, it's really nice to have 128 gigabytes of unified memory with this Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. But for the average person, I'd say the 32 gig version would work. If you can splurge and get that 64, it'd be really nice to have that. That way you could dedicate that 16 gigs of memory to the iGPU and not have to worry about system memory either.
But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm going to spend a few more days with this and try to get some video generation done on this with good results. And I'll probably post that up in my community section. But if you're interested in learning a little more about the ASUS ROG Flow Z13, I'll leave links in the description. If there's anything else you want to see on this, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.